but there are other vaccine projects also based in Britain. Professor Robin Shattuck of Imperial College London heads a team working on a vaccine based on a new technology which hasn't yet been tried in humans, and it marks a milestone in this week's as human clinical trials begin this week. I spoke to him earlier this morning and I asked him how confident he was of success. Well, I think confidence is the wrong question. I think we have as good an opportunity as any other vaccine group to develop a vaccine, but predicting success is, is a foolish game because any individual vaccine has a high risk of failure. And what's important is that by having multiple vaccines around the world, we're pretty certain that we will get several that will be shown to work. Now, your one is based on a new technology that hasn't been tested on humans before. In layman's terms, can you try to explain what's new about it? Yeah, it's, it's a really new approach. So normally vaccines are made by growing the virus and inactivating it or using other viruses to deliver it. We've gone through a much simpler approach. Essentially, we take the genetic material, only a small portion that encodes for the surface protein of the virus, and we make multiple copies of that and capture it in microscopic fat droplets. Now, when that's uh, injected into the muscle, it's taken up by the cells, and that code, the instructions, are rapidly copied in those cells, and they actually become uh, manufacturing sites for making multiple copies of that protein um, that alerts the immune system so that it makes protective antibodies. And the idea is that when you're then naturally exposed to the virus, you're already immune. The advantage that that gives us is we can make huge amounts of the vaccine because we use very tiny doses. Um, and is this something that could be relevant to all sorts of new diseases or pandemics of different kinds, not simply COVID-19 then? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're excited about the technology. It's, it has a kind of plug and play approach. So today, coronavirus, tomorrow, tomorrow avian flu. And we think if, we, if this technology works, whether it's used widely or not, it, by the time we get to the next pandemic, this will be the dominant approach because it is the technology of the future. Well, I have to ask you, if it works, how soon before people are able to use it for this pandemic? Well, again, that's a kind of numbers game because we need to show that it blocks transmission out in the community. Uh, we will be running a trial, a, a very large trial in the UK starting in October after we've done our safety study. Um, but it depends on how much virus is around at the time. So we're looking to run the trial in other parts of the world as well to get that, that, that result as quickly as we can. And I gather you've tried it already on mice. What has that taught you? Well, that shows us that it, it's safe, which is the most important thing. It also shows us that it induces very high levels of neutralizing antibody, and we think this is the main mechanism of protection. And, and what we're really keen to see now is in, in humans whether we get that level, um, and we're keen to see how it compares to the other vaccines that are around there. And I think it will be very important for us rapidly to move into uh, a, you know, a zone that's comparing data and ideally where samples are being independently verified rather than predicting success, which is really, you know, at best, uh, you know, a a speculation. Game, yes. Um, can I ask you, the other thing that people always ask about vaccines is how long this vaccine might last, giving immunity? Yeah, that's a great question. And obviously, we don't know. And one of the issues is if you rush into delivering a vaccine after studying it for only a few months, you'll only know it's protective for a few months. Uh, by the time you get to a year, you know if it's protected for a year. What's uh, another advantage of our approach is we can reboost the immune response. So if we need an annual booster, we can do that very effectively. Not all of the technologies can do that. So that's another real advantage of using this kind of next generation approach. And obviously, as we've discussed, you have to do this at scale. The Oxford team are working with AstraZeneca. Are you convinced you can produce enough vaccine quickly enough if it works? So we can certainly do that for the UK. Um, we've already kind of put everything in place to be able to do that for the UK, and we hope that the the government will will act on you know wanting to purchase that. Um, and we're working with other partners around the world to do that. We we have a very different model to AstraZeneca. Um, if you like, we want to be almost the the Microsoft of the vaccine world, where we make the genetic code, we pass that to other manufacturers and give them a sub license, so that they can then use their hardware to manufacture the vaccine in different parts of the globe. It's obviously going to be a very big week for you ahead, um, but I, I, I'm really interested, at what point do you think 
you know that this is going to work? How long before you think you've got confidence in this? Well, we'll get a degree of confidence. We see that it induces good levels of neutralizing antibody because we think that's the most important benchmark. And we'll see that within a couple of months. But then the next phase is we want to see if it blocks infection. You know, we want one that blocks people from getting the virus at all um, more than seeing a vaccine that perhaps stops someone becoming very, very unwell. Now, according to the World Health Organization, I read, there are 136 potential vaccines being worked at around the world. Simple question, if one of them turns out to be highly effective, do you simply stop? Probably not, because people will define highly effective in different ways. Um, it depends on how effective it is at preventing infection, how long that immunity lasts. It also depends on cost and scale up. So it'll be a challenge for any single group to make the vaccine for the world. Um, we're looking at an approach which we hope will be very low cost. Um, and so there will always be parts of the world that may struggle to access a vaccine quickly. And if our vaccine is used by anybody and prevents infection anywhere in the world, we'll have done a good job. Professor Shattuck, let me end by saying something I can't normally say to my guests, which is the very best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you.